Welcome to our lecture online. The next set is kind of a different set where we need to use a special technique. Notice that here in the denominator we have a negative sign in front of the x squared term. Here in the numerator we have a negative sign in front of the x squared term, which makes it more complicated, more confusing when we try to factor that. So the best thing to do is to always convert by factoring out a negative 1 the x squared term to a positive quantity. So this is what we're going to do. In this particular case, we'll leave the numerator alone. That's x minus 2. But in the denominator, we're going to factor out a negative 1, which leaves us with a positive 5x squared. This becomes a minus 9x, and that becomes a minus 2. That makes it a lot easier to factor what's left. We're going to do the same over here. We're going to factor out a negative 1 out of the denominator. So this becomes a negative 1 times what we have left is a positive 2x squared and that becomes a positive 9x and a negative 5. In the denominator we leave everything alone because we start out with a positive first term 2x squared plus 7x minus 4. All right now we do exactly the same as before we're going to factor what's left we just keep bring in the negative one along, then see what happens at the very end. We could then maybe multiply it back in. So on the right side here, the numerator stays the same, x minus 2. In the denominator, we have a negative 1 times what we want to factor here. Now we're going to end up with two binomials. Here we need a 5x and an x, but notice since the 5 is kind of a big number, we may want to use yeah, the FOIL method. So let's try and see what we get over here when we use the FOIL method on the one in the denominator. To get a 5, we're going to need either 5 and a 1 or a 1 and a 5. Oop, <laughs> I said 5 and I wrote 2. That happens more often. All right, and next to get the last term, we need a negative 2. So therefore, we can get a negative 2 and a 1 or we can get a positive 2 and a negative 1. So one of those combinations should give us a negative 9 in the denominator. So let's multiply this times this. So 5 times 1, that gives us 5. And 1 times a negative 2 gives a negative 2, which is a positive 3. So that doesn't seem to work. I need a very big negative number, which means I probably want to multiply the uh, 5 with the negative 2. That's probably a better combination. So it looks like this and this combined will give us the right number. So 1 times 1, because we go this way, 1 times 1 gives us 1. 5 times a negative 2 gives us a negative 10, which is equal to negative 9. And that is, of course, what I'm looking for. So that's the correct combination. We have a 1x minus 2. So this will be uh, 1x minus 2. And we need a positive 5x plus 1. So positive 5x plus 1. That makes it a little bit easier to factor. Now we realize that we have an x minus 2 and an x minus 2 that cancels out. So this becomes 1, this becomes 1. We can bring the negative 1 to the numerator and write this as negative 1 divided by 5x plus 1 as the final simplified result of that expression. All right, next what we're going to do here is factor the numerator and the denominator. So this becomes negative 1 times the product of two binomials will need a 2x and an x. If this is negative and that's positive, we need a positive and negative sign. Again, we could use FOIL or we could guess. We need a big negative, a big positive middle term. So how about 2x and a positive 5 and an x and a negative 1? Because negative 1 times a positive 5 gives us a negative 5. And 2 times 5 is 10, minus 1 is 9. So that seems to work. For the denominator, we can do something similar. We have the product of two binomials. We need a 2x and an x. Again, we need a positive and negative number. We need a big middle term. So how about a 2x and a plus 4 and an x minus 1? So 2 times 4 is 8, minus 1 is 7, and we get the correct middle term. So sometimes we can see right through the problem and find the good factors. Notice we have a 2x minus 1 both in the numerator and the denominator. They cancel out, and we're left with a negative 1 multiplied times an x plus 5. And in the denominator, we have an x plus 4. We could multiply it through, or we could just leave it at that. I prefer it in this form. And there's the simplified version of our initial expression. And that is how it's done.